Welcome today, everyone. My name is Heather Reed. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. I'm so excited today to talk to you about immunity and nutrition. Luckily, no toilet paper is required to attend today's session. I hope that got a chuckle out of at least a couple of you. It's crazy to think that what we're living through right now, it's quite surreal in all honesty, but let's come together. I wanna share my passion with you and talk about what can we do from a nutrition standpoint to really increase your immunity and make sure it's as strong as possible. So let's get into it. What are we gonna look at? Well, let's start with some trivia. Let's test your knowledge. Just so get those thinking caps. Let's look at the role of our immunity. Let's break that down a bit. How can we build a strong immunity? And then let's look at nutrition. So those thinking caps better be on. So we're gonna do it easier with some true and false. So our first question, there are specific foods that will help prevent me from catching COVID-19 or other influenzas. What do you guys think? True or false? So this is where I wish I could see your head shaking. Yes or no. What do you think? So this is false. Well, no food will prevent you from catching COVID-19 or any other illness. A balanced diet will help you build a strong immune system to fight off infections or illnesses. And it also help decrease duration of illness as well. So it'll help decrease that time that you are sick if you do happen to get sick, but it will not necessarily help prevent you from getting sick. But we need to have that build. We need to help get you a strong immune system. So question two, put on those thinking caps again. Mega dosing vitamins and minerals will prevent COVID-19. So on social media right now, there's so many supplements for sale. Take this supplement, don't get it. Take this, if you have it, it will treat you. What do you think? Is that true? Is it as simple as that? Yes or no? False. Vitamin and mineral supplements will not prevent you from catching COVID-19. In fact, mega dosing with supplements can cause harm. And we've been seeing that with some of these recommendations that are out on social media, the effects that it's having. Some research has shown that vitamin C supplementation can help reduce severity and duration of your common cold of those respiratory infections, but nothing to do with COVID-19. It has been shown in pneumonia, but not in the incidences of COVID-19. Vitamin D is another supplement that is important in immune function and is hard to get from food. So that's one that right now, since it is still winter, yes, it's still winter here in um, more Northern Canada where, where, where I'm currently living. Um, vitamin D is a good one to be taking a thousand international units per day, coming from a soft gel or a liquid, just because that helps with the absorption of it. So that's it for trivia, nothing too taxing. So let's get more into it. So the role of our immune system, what does it do? So it's a complex system. It's responsible for fighting off infections and illnesses that invade our body. It starts with our nose, our past, past. It's white body cells, white cell bodies. It's antibodies. It's very complex then. But is it, it is important for fighting off infections and illnesses. What affects this? So poor nutrition. I'm not talking about one-off meal here or there. I'm talking about a long-standing poor feeding situation. So where you're not getting good nutrients coming in from your diet. So these are your brightly colored fruits and vegetables. This is not having a good source of protein. It's actually interesting, energy and protein malnutrition, so not getting enough energy and protein is actually a very um, interesting part of a poor nutrition being a poor immunity. Obesity, overnutrition, so too many calories and obesity can reduce the immune function. Low birth weight infants, they do at first have a lower immunity, but they can build that back over time, which is great. Elderly, we know that they have an impaired immune function. Part of that is because of their diet. So we call them tea or toasters. They have a lot of tea and they have a lot of toast. Not a lot of macro and micronutrients coming from that. And then the population with 
different comorbidities. So our cardiovascular disease, our diabetes, our hypertension, all of those things just take a little extra hit to the immune system. So what can we do about this? Well, eating balanced 80% of the time. We're not aiming for perfection here, everyone. I'm not saying you have to be 100%. Did I just have a cookie for with my lunch? 110%. It was delicious. Managing your stress. This can sometimes be laughable in this situation with the financial stress everyone's under, not knowing where our jobs, our security, but we need to try to manage the stress. It impacts our immune system so much. So meditation, yoga, deep breathing, virtual chatting with friends, FaceTime, getting adequate sleep with everyone's schedule being so interesting right now. We need to still work on sleep patterns. So getting rid of that blue light an hour before going to bed. So those are your TVs, your um, cell phones, anything like that that emits those blue lights. Try to turn those off an hour before you go to bed. Incorporate exercise. I know gyms are out of the question right now, but get outside, go for walks, get off the couch, press pause on that PVR, get moving, and then making sure you still continue to manage any health conditions. So you want to be checking that blood pressure, checking those blood sugars, monitoring heart disease, any complications that way, and be mindful of alcohol consumption. So two drinks per day. That's not saying if you're not drinking to start drinking, but we want to make sure we're not going above that. So in this stressful situation, we don't want to be turning to any sort of alcohol consumption as something to manage that stress. So let's look at nutrition. How does that fit into immunity? Well, food provides us with energy and calories and also the vital nutrients for survival, and it helps the body function and stay healthy. You'll, you'll notice all these great colored nutrients that I have here in those vegetables. So once again, brighter, the more nutrients associated with a fruit or vegetable. So let's dig a bit more into this. So we have macronutrients. These are larger molecules, and these are really the base of our food. This is where our energy comes from. So protein gives us those building blocks, sound in animal meat, animal protein. So milk, eggs, meat, peanut butter, lentils, fat provides us with energy, carbohydrates, gives us the energy to move. And it also gives us fiber, think gut health. Micronutrients are much smaller and they don't provide us with energy per se, but they help us get the energy out and be able to access it. It really allows our body to operate as optimally as possible. So vitamins and minerals, these are some of the top ones. So folic acid, vitamin A, vitamin C, our Bs, vitamin D, vitamin E, and minerals, copper, iron, selenium, zinc. You've probably seen lots of these in the media these days, and they are quite important to that immunity. So how do we do this? This list look, looks overwhelming, but I have some great news for you. And you know, we all need some good news. These nutrients are found in everyday food. We don't have to go digging around in the grocery store trying to find where can I access this? How hard is this going to be? So let me show you. Breakfast. Do you remember your mom telling you it was the most important meal of the day? Well, now it's turned and I tell my kids that it's the most important meal of the day. So you can look at my little plate here, portion of grain, protein, fruit, and dairy. Dairy can be lactose-free. It's really for that vitamin D and calcium. Sorry, Ronnie, just a sec. Go watch TV with Papa. Go watch TV with Papa. Mommy's trying to record this. So baked oatmeal, make it the night before, have it waiting, heat it up. You'll see fiber in the oatmeal, almonds, protein in the almonds, Walmart, in the walnuts. Breakfast sandwiches, great option, delicious. Smoothies, a great way to put in hidden nutrients. So spinach, kale, chia, hemp. So if we look at the protein in these, almonds, your egg, cheese, 
your milk or milk alternatives, your Greek yogurts. It's really important to have a protein at every meal. So in Canada, in the US, a lot of our diets are based on a little bit of protein in the breakfast, a bit of protein at lunch, and then a larger protein serving at supper. So if we think of our six, eight ounce, 10 ounce steak. So protein's a bit interesting. It doesn't have the storage form that carbohydrates have in the sense of glycogen. So glycogen, great, we're not eating carbohydrates. We can dip into our glycogen source and still have that active um, form of storage of energy to be moving. Protein's not like that. So we need to have protein spread out throughout the day. So we still keep our energy stores up and we're not having those carbohydrate cravings. Actually, at this time, when lots of us are working from home and we may be working in our kitchen, in that dining room, looking at food, if we're having carbohydrate cravings because we haven't had a sufficient breakfast, we're working in our dining room, we're looking at our kitchen, that could lead to that snacking that might not be from true hunger. It might be caused by, hmm, I think I'm hungry. Hmm. Those cookies look darn good. And it might not be from that true hunger. So we really need to be focused on getting enough protein at each meal and spreading it out throughout the day. Lunch ideas. You'll look at my plate here, half a plate of vegetables, quarter grain, quarter protein, And then fat, of course, we need that fat to absorb vitamins A, D, E, and K, and just makes food taste better. So we need that fat in there as well. Tuna melt, use tuna, use salmon, those canned items, great to have. Bean salad, awesome. So chickpeas, black beans, lentils, Romano beans, you can use some canned, you can use some frozen, you can use some dried and just soak them. Tons of options that, that way. Great protein, great fiber. Blackberry soup, you can think of this as your throw anything in it that's in the fridge soup. So get rid of any leftovers, frozen or raw vegetables. There's a bag of frozen diced vegetables that I love to keep on hand. So already prepared, already diced, have ready to go toss into anything. So if we think of vitamin C, vitamin C is very important for immunity. Adult needs approximately 75 milligrams. Half a cup of chopped red pepper is 140 milligrams. So you are almost doubling your amount with half a cup of chopped red pepper. So it's pretty easy when you try to break it down that way. Dinner ideas. You'll notice the plate looks exactly the same as lunch. Half a plate of vegetables, grain, protein, fat. I like using this model because it's not weighing things. It's not portioning things. You can take this with you wherever you go, which right now is going to be your house or work. But in the future, when we get back to living our full lives, buffets, Christmas meals, um, on a cruise, wherever it is, you could be portioning out your meals this way. Chicken teriyaki bowl. Have fun with this. So it could be chicken, ground chicken, ground beef tofu, tempeh, beans. What I love to do whenever I'm using a ground meat product, once my meat's pretty much all brown, I open up a can of lentils, rinse it well to get rid of that extra salt or sodium, and then I mix it in. My kids and husband never know the difference. Adds extra fiber and a bit of extra protein, and it tastes delicious. Turkey chili, always a go-to, a favorite batch cook, freezer meals, ready to go. We have a little recipe, a fun recipe for you at the end of this. It's a turkey chili with butternut squash. Just a fun way to add in a couple extra nutrient-rich vegetables there. Pasta and meatball, favorite of lots of people's. Pasta, spiralize some vegetables. So carrots, zucchini, any of those ground vegetables. Add them in with your pasta, mix it up, nice and colorful. The kids will love it. So vitamin A, another nutrient that's important in immunity. Typical female, 2,300 international units per day. Typical male, 3,000. One cup of spring mix. So if we're thinking salad, kale, some romaine, some spinach, 
8,690. So we've almost tripled what we need in one cup of spring mix. That's crazy. We don't need supplements. We can get it from food, food that tastes good. Now let's look at snacks. So you wanna have a protein, spreading out that protein, remember? Vegetable or fruit, giving you those extra nutrients. Cottage cheese and fruit, vegetables and hummus. I have a great hummus recipe for you at the end of this. Fruits and nuts. I also have a great sunflowers um, oat mug cake at the end of this. Takes you about two minutes to make. It's amazing. My kids love it. Vitamin E in your peanut butter or almonds. Quarter cup of almonds is nine milligrams. Your goal is 15 milligrams. So quick to get. Another great thing to enjoy with tea, ginseng, or with your snack is ginseng tea. So 200 milligrams of ginseng tea compared to a placebo, so compared to people that were just having plain tea, did help shorten the duration of acute respiratory infections, which included colds among healthy adults. Once again, there's no research with this with COVID, but in a regular situation with a healthy adult, it could reduce the duration of regular colds. So it doesn't hurt to try that if you enjoy ginseng tea. How do we start this? I've just listed off a bunch of different breakfast ideas, a bunch of different lunch ideas, a bunch of different supper ideas with recipes coming at the end of this. Where do you start? Keep it easy. Pick one breakfast, one lunch, and one supper for the week. Try those. Did your family like them? If they did, keep them. If it was like picking, pulling teeth, get rid of them. Use what you have at home. So modify the recipes. Send me an email if you need. If it didn't work and you're like, I have this, but I ha didn't have that, send me an email. Ask how you can modify it. Get everyone involved. So get your kids chopping. Get your kids picking different recipes. Get your husband or your spouse or your partner, your wife, everyone involved in the kitchen. And remember this acronym, KISS. Keep it simple, sweetheart. You still want to have fun. Food should taste good. Food should look good. You don't this to you don't want to have this more stress on you right now. We want this to be a fun thing. So top ways to strengthen your immunity. Practice self-care. Take care of you. We know this saying you can't put on anyone else's oxygen mask before you put on your own. It's true with this. So eat balance 80% of the time. Just keep on practicing. It's not perfection. Stay active, get moving, rest, maintain those good sleep habits, and find ways to manage stress. Remember to do your part, protect everyone else's immunity. So practice proper hand washing, keep on practicing social distancing, and staying home whether you have symptoms or not. If we work together, we're going to be out of this before, hopefully, we know it. Hopefully. So here at Revive Wellness and my Viva Plan, we're here to support you. We want you to know that we're here to discuss nutrition, psychology, cooking, activity. We have your back. So we're still working virtually at home. You might see our kids running in and out, but we have you. We have the week of wellness going on right now, and we're sharing what we're doing with our families. And then for all of you people who enjoy social media, which is a lot of people right now because we have the time to, here's all our um, hashtags and all how to follow those. So please follow us, see what we're doing right now with our families, um, keeping sane at home with them. And we have a lot of other webinars coming out and some have already been released and we have more coming up. So um, follow the Revive Wellness Inc. Facebook page and please stay tuned. So if you want any of those recipes that I discuss, and there's a couple other ones as well, text nutrition to 555-888 to get some great recipes and resources. I thoroughly hope you enjoyed this webinar. If you have any concerns or want to just reach out to us, we're here for you. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe.